and the person who drives TURF, that stands for Texans Uniting for Reform and Freedom. Terry Hall, I am so proud to know her. And I will tell you that there are people in Austin uh, in the upper echelons of government that don't like Terry. <laughs> they don't like Terry Hall. And they say, you know, Terry Hall, she just doesn't tell the truth. You know what? They never challenge her on her facts. They just don't like hearing it. Now, what you don't know about Terry is that Terry is the mother. She and Roger, her husband over here, uh, are, are parents to eight children with a ninth one on the way. They are home educator parents. Terry Hall every day, if you count Roger in the number, Terry Hall every day has 10 reasons not to do what she does, which is fight for you in Austin. Terry is up there at 8 o'clock so many mornings. She's in those hearings. She's testifying. Terry goes back and forth from San Antonio to Austin several times a week. There will be people in this state that will benefit from Terry Hall's work that will never know her name. That is the kind of commitment we need from people. And I will tell you, in Tyler, Texas, there are people who are qualified to help us in this fight that are out chasing a little white ball. <laughs> While this mother is down there fighting, I'm going to ask you to please turn off your cell phones and give Terry Hall your best attention. And hold on to your seats, because if you think that I gave you some information, my sister, my sister warrior here, at Terry Hall, is gonna, she's gonna round it off for you. Thank you. think of a better partner in crime in Austin than Joanne Fleming. You all have a treasure. In here. All right, well, we're going to talk about toll roads and transportation policy and what's wrong with everything that's going uh, wrong in our state when it comes to this issue. They've basically been on a spending spree. You've heard about that today already. Um, what's happened is uh, we have a gas, a state gas tax that's the primary, well, and federal gas tax too, is the primary source of funding for our road system. The state gas tax is 20 cents a gallon. The federal is 18.4 cents a gallon. Neither have been raised in 20 years. Not adjusted to inflation. It doesn't go up with the price of your gas. So instead of fix that problem, they've decided to borrow and spend their way out of it. <clears throat> in fact, 47% of our gas tax isn't even going to roads. So that exacerbates the problem on top of the first problem. Then number three, Texas leads the nation in road debt. That means more than California, more than New York, more than New Jersey. I actually grew up in California, but we got to Texas as fast as we could. <laughs> and believe me, we did. <laughs> they tax you out of there. Um, but at the end of the day, as long as I can remember whether my parents were voting or when I was voting in California, there was bond elections, a lot of them for roads. And here we are in Texas, exceeding California's road debt in less than eight years while they've been issuing debt in California my entire life. That's a big, big number, $31 billion with principal and interest. And then, of course, our state spending has been out of control during the same time frame. The last 20 years, our spending's tripled. Um, most of that's been health and human services has gone up 406%, education 276%. <clears throat> but I also have to say in the last 10 years, it's doubled under a Republican administration, which is so disappointing for us. Now, these are not your traditional toll roads that we're seeing. They've shifted. Instead of our uh, very affordable gas tax funded road system, we now have been shifting to tolls to bail out our legislators who have raided our highway funds and have refused to fix the problem with our existing road taxes. So um, these are not like your traditional turnpikes in Houston and Dallas. Those were brand new roads. They were done with something called toll revenue bonds. That means that there's no taxpayer money involved. If the traffic didn't show up for those roads, 
It's the private bond investors that take the hit for that, not you and me. So those were more like well-conceived toll roads. And those aren't the kind that most Texans object to. The users truly paying for the road. And of course, the money and control stayed in Texas. And we think that a well-conceived toll road would take the toll off the road when it's paid for. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Do I hear an amen to that? Yes. And now they're actually imposing tolls on our existing roads. And that's a whole different discussion we'll get to a little bit later. Then there's this very, very controversial financing mechanism called public-private partnerships. Really what this is, is public money for private profits. One of the big things that really launched the Tea Party was these bailouts, the TARP bailouts. Um, and this is not unlike that. Because we were socializing the losses and privatizing the profits. Well, that's precisely how these public-private partnerships are structured. It basically hands our public infrastructure over to private corporations. Some people will call that fascism, corporatism, even cronyism. You, you put the name on it. Uh, it's also Agenda 21. I've actually read quite a bit of the transportation plank of Agenda 21. And one of the primary, well, two of the primary goals are to restrict mobility and abolish, says abolish private property rights. They do not want private property. It's all about the collective. And this is how they do it, because public-private partnerships, we always have had eminent domain for roads. But now we're taking it in the name of a public use and giving it to a private corporation for, for profit for up to 50 years. Some parts of the country, they're 75, even 100-year deals. So these are really sweetheart deals. These privatized toll roads use the state's exclusive power of eminent domain and abuse it for a private use instead of a public one. You know, in Texas, we're supposed to have a constitutional protection against eminent domain for private gain. Don't you remember quite a few sessions on that? There was even a special session, I believe, in 2006 on that. Uh, well, that's not what's happening now. They always make sure, and Joanne knows about all the trap doors, there's always an exception in these bills. There's always an exception and a loophole for the type of deals like this that they want to continue to do. But they can go back home to the district and promise the moon that they have ended eminent domain for private gain when in fact they have made sure that they can still do these public-private partnerships um, for roads and public facilities. They also have in these little trap doors, these gotcha clauses, uh, something called the non-compete agreement. This means that the state or the total entities, whatever's in your region, like you all have a regional mobility authority that does Loop 49 around Tyler, um, they are not allowed to build any free capacity, whether it's highways, sometimes it can even be uh, farm to market roads, um, any kind of art uh, major arterial road, it, it goes down that far that they cannot build any free roads that compete with the privately run and operated toll road. So that pretty well puts the future of our public transportation needs in the hands of private corporations. They're telling us what we can and cannot build in the state of Texas. I don't know about you, but that does not sit well with me. Uh, they also have incentives and little gotcha clauses in the contracts that allow you to manipulate the speed limits. For instance, they'll increase the speed limit on the tollway and decrease the speed limits on your free routes to try and incentivize people and force you to have to take that toll. And they've actually done it on a road we'll talk about in a minute. They also charge toll rates as high as 75 cents a mile. And really, it's giving these private corporations the power to tax. Well, picture's worth a, worth a thousand words, right? Here's what tolling our existing roads looks like. The folks in the middle there, that's a 10-mile toll road. It's almost a buck a mile to take that during peak hours, $9.60. And don't think that that's not possible in Texas, because this is California. It's an example. It was one of the first deals ever done, one of these public-private partnerships. But I can tell you... And this is pretty much what my highway in San Antonio looks like, US 281. The congested lanes, that's pretty much where we're at right now <laughs> during peak hours. And they want to stick some of these managed toll lanes down the middle of it and charge you a premium to get out of congestion. But how much does it really cost us? Well, if it's a publicly operated toll, toll road, they generally average anywhere from 15 cents a mile to a, a quarter a mile. There's several in Austin that are up to a buck fifty a mile to take some of these toll projects. So it really varies. But let's just take kind of middle of the road here, 
25 cents a mile, that's like adding $5 to every gallon of gas you buy. Now, if it's one of these public-private partnerships, sometimes we call them P3s for short. These P3s, there's two that are going to open, one later this year, one next year, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And those are going to charge you 75 cents a mile. That's 975 one way, 1950 a day, 100 bucks a week, nearly five grand a year in new taxes to get to work. That's like adding $15 to every gallon of gas you buy. And yet Centra forecasts only 8% of the cars are ever going to be able to avail themselves of those lanes. And just to make you a little bit more angry, if you're not yet, um, like Joanne likes to say, it's going to set your hair on fire. Even worse, <laughs> they built those projects with a billion dollars in your gas tax money. So your money went into building it, but you're going to have to pay 75 cents a mile or five grand a year just to get to work. And that's if you don't have to take it other days of the week. So really, penny, it's pennies versus dollars. Gas tax are pennies a day. Tolls are dollars a day. Here's, here's uh, this example about the manipulation of the speed limits. Centra secured the first P3 contract in 2007 before we could get a moratorium on such contracts in place. So now they're truly illegal to enter into these contracts in the state of Texas, except, except, there's been exceptions in the bill. And they've passed exceptions, if you want to call them that, um, every session since 2007. And most of them are just the same projects that were in the original bill in 2007, um, and they haven't been completed yet, so they just keep pushing the can down the road from one session to the next. But ultimately, uh, they have the State Highway 130 segments 5 and 6. Some of you may know that State Highway 130 that's the loop around Austin or this leg around Austin to help you avoid traffic on I-35. Well, the first four segments are owned by the state, which is about 46 miles. The southern um, 41 miles is uh, operated by this Spanish company, Sintra. Well, it has a lovely non-compete clause in that contract. Virtually the entire county of Caldwell and Guadalupe cannot have any competing free roads for our lifetimes, for our children's lifetimes. Even my grandchildren will not be able to drive on a free road in Caldwell or uh, Guadalupe counties in our state because of this non-compete clause. Very draconian uh, non-compete clause. The ones in the Metroplex weren't as strict as this one. Then they have in there an incentive to increase the speed limit. What Centra did was they put in this contract, if the state increased the speed limit to say 70, 75, 80, 85, they got a payment, I call it a bribe, from Centra for the privilege of increasing the speed on the tollway. Well, TxDOT went all the way to the max and got a $100 million payoff from this Spanish company to raise the speed limit to the highest in the country. They actually had to get a state law change last session, which we fought, mostly because we knew it had to do with this. Uh, but they had to get the state law changed because before that, our state speed limits could not exceed, uh, I believe it was 75. Well then, at the same commission hearing that they increased the speed limit to 85 miles per hour for the tollway for the Spanish company for which TxDOT got a $100 million payoff, they subsequent, or at this concurrently lowered the speed limit on the free route adjacent to the tollway. It used to be 65, now they lowered it down to 55. Do you think that was a coincidence? No. Likely not. So they cashed in on the 100 million. And then one other thing about these little gotcha contracts, anyone that comes into our state from across the border, whether it's our southern border, or any of the other states that surround Texas, you and I, the Texas taxpayer, are on the hook for those tolls. Those people get to ride on this road for free, and we have to pay a private operator so that they are guaranteed their profits. So they truly are socializing all their losses. They've always made the taxpayers a hedge to make sure that they uh, can't lose out on the deal. Well, it eliminates due process as well and how we um, deal with toll collections. It puts the taxpayer on the hook for these profits. They use massive amounts of public money, like the billion dollars for those two Metroplex projects. Um, and they always, always, always cost the taxpayers more. Back during the moratorium debate, in fact, it was one of your senators, I think most of you probably have 
Senator Robert Nichols, although you have L type up here too. He's not up here anymore. Gotcha. Okay. Well, he was the one who authored this this moratorium bill to put a moratorium on these types of contracts. He said it's designed to extract exorbitant toll rates, and he was right. But what I find so interesting is he still voted for these P3s in 2009, 2011, and he just voted for them last week. In fact, he's authoring the bill in committee uh, that just got voted out last week. And they cost 50% more. This is a P3 expert, Dennis Enright, who testified before the committee in 2007, said that they always cost more, and it's in fact 50% more to do them this way than if it was a publicly run toll project. And of course, that's even a publicly run toll project is still 25 times to 50 times more than a gas tax funded road. What's even worse is they're going to charge us these tolls in perpetuity. We actually have constitutional protection on this. So believe me, I'm still working to, on putting together a legal case to challenge them on the constitutionality of this. But they still passed the bill. This was last session, again, authored by Nichols and Phillips in the House. Some of you may have heard of uh, Larry Phillips. He chairs the House Transportation Committee um, and is really good at intimidating people to support Joe Strauss. <laughs> anyway, uh, this bill actually does a Robin Hood rate of tolls from one road to another. Used to be in our state that you could not take toll revenues from one road and use it somewhere else because, gee, that's socialism. You know, that's Robin Hood. It's stealing from one and giving to another, is it not? Well, that's what they put in statute. They've legalized it now. So don't ever let Republicans convince you that they're not for socialism. It just has to be the right kind, and they're all for it. Um, and so this allows them, in, in a sense, because we've figured out through all these very complex statutes, what it means is they can keep the toll in place forever. Because what they're allowing them to do through system financing is to pledge the revenues from one road to another. So you can't take the tolls off the first road because those revenues are pledged to another one. And they'll do this two, three, four times over to keep funding their system. It's no longer your toll paying for the road. You're paying for everybody else's road. It's so mingled. You talk about truth and taxation, truth and budgeting. Oh, this is the most messed up scheme you've ever seen. And it allows them to use borrowed money to secure more borrowed money. And they can and use that borrowed money for any purpose, even their operating expenses. Can you imagine using borrowed money just to keep these toll authorities open? And it includes rating property taxes for toll roads. I mean, it just keeps going. And then SB 19 was also passed. Nichols was the uh, Senate sponsor on that one as well. It includes um, some of these other tolling entities. This first one in, uh, related to RMAs, which you have here in Tyler. But there's um, North Texas Tollway Authority and the Harris County Tollway Authority are a little bit different entities. So they passed this bill to take care of them, gave the, gives them the legal ability to do socialism, system financing, allows them to toll in perpetuity, and it gives these toll entities ownership of these state highways in perpetuity. Again, why would they want ownership in perpetuity if you're a tolling entity if it's not because they want to keep the toll in place in perpetuity? This has become a new tax on driving, a hidden tax. People think the toll's paying for the road you're driving on, and that's just not the case anymore. They're going to keep it in place forever. Now, the fight over tolling existing roads, we've actually been having this for eight years now. This is my fourth session working this issue. And for some reason, Senator Robert Nichols is our biggest roadblock on trying to prohibit tolls on existing freeways. Of course, that's a double tax, right? to charge us again for something our tax money's already built and paid for. Well, um, he's introduced a bill every session that uh, is gonna tweak the statute. He wants to take out some of the loopholes. There's tons of loopholes in this statute, uh, but he wants to add in another one. So here's <clears throat> the current law. We'll just read it here, I know it's teeny. Except it's provided by, the department may not operate a non-told state highway or a non-told state highway, uh, excuse me, non-told state highway as a toll project and may not transfer that highway or segment to another entity to operate it as a toll project. And then there's your big loophole, unless. We like it until it gets to this. We're like, yeah, you can't operate a non-tolled part of our state highway system as a toll road, but here come all the exceptions. This is just a few that I've highlighted. The project was designated as a toll project before September 1st, 2005. Well, about 70% of the toll projects being developed around the state right now were in an MPO plan before September of 2005. 
So that pretty much gives them free reign to convert all kinds of roads um, all over our state, literally hundreds of toll projects. Then the second one, if they reconstruct the highway so that the number of non-toll lanes is greater than or equal to the number in existence before reconstruction, or if the facility is constructed adjacent to the highway or segment so that the number of non-toll lanes uh, is equal to or greater than. Um, well, all of that comes into play because of how our highway department interprets that language. They take that to mean, okay, if you have a six lane road today, we can slap tolls on all six lanes of your highway. And as long as we leave you a frontage road, an access road alongside your highway, that's your new non-toll lanes. As long as we have the same number of lanes, never mind that one's a highway lane and expressway that you can go 60 miles an hour or more usually, and that the frontage road usually has 45 mile per hour posted speed limits. Of course, lots of driveways, lots of cars coming in and out, stop lights in the middle of your road. They can add more stop lights as the years go by. I don't think that that's a fair replacement. Do you? Well, that's what they're doing. And so that's the kind of language that they have exploited through the years. And they can also make any of our current HOV lanes a toll lane, as long as they allow HOV uh, users to ride free. But they've even changed that, and we'll talk about it in a sec. We want to keep that language clean. We want it to stop and have no unless and have all those exceptions after it. But we're getting feet, or we're getting um, pushback from Senator Nichols and the highway department and all the toll authorities because they want to do this to us. They want to steal our highways and leave us frontage roads so that we're forced to have to pay that toll. Well, no Texans should ever have to have their paid for freeway lanes converted to toll lanes and be stuck on substandard downgraded frontage roads. Amen? Yep. Okay. The precedent, sadly, has already been set. That tollway I was telling you about that Centra had, first foreign on toll road to open in the state of Texas, it was last fall. We announced a boycott of it, and it's actually not doing too well financially, so I'm going to take some of the credit for that, because uh, we don't want Texas sold off to these foreign companies. So, uh, nonetheless, they came in in the Lockhart area, you know, Texas barbecue capital of the world or something like that. Um, US 183 was their freeway through there. Centra came and put their toll road right on the top of that road and took over their freeway. Now that's Centra's toll road. They permanently ch shifted 183 to frontage roads. That is now their only free route. And remember, this non-compete agreement will last 52 years. 52 years they cannot build any competing free roads. No more highways. Even some major arterial roads will not be allowed because of these non-compete agreements. And they, remember, had their speed limit reduced from 65 down to 55. Well, we actually put in a bill um, that we support with um, Senator Zafarini, who's the senator over that, that part of our state. And it was to prevent 